Visakhapatnam also known as Visaj and Walter is the largest city and the financial capital of the Indian state of Andhra Pradesh. The city is the administrative headquarters of Visakhapatnam district and the Eastern Naval Command of the Indian Navy, state headquarters of Indian Coast Guard. Its geographical location is amidst the Eastern Ghats and the coast of the Bay of Bengal. It is the most populous city in the state with a population of 2,035,922 as of 2011, making it the 14th largest city in the country. It is also the ninth most populous metropolitan area in India with a population of 6,053,000. With an output of $43.5 billion, Visakhapatnam is the ninth largest contributor to India's overall gross domestic product as of 2016. Visakhapatnam's history stretches back to the 6th century BCE, when it was considered a part of the Kalinga Kingdom, and later ruled by the Vengi, the Pallava, and Eastern Ganga dynasties. Archaeological records suggest that the present city was built around the 11th and 12th centuries with control over the city fluctuating between the Chola dynasty and the Gajapati kingdom, until its conquest by the Vijayanagara Empire in the 15th century. Conquered by the Mughals in the 16th century, European powers eventually set up trading interests in the city, and by the end of the 18th century it had come under French rule. Control passed to the British in 1804 and it remained under British colonial rule until India's independence in 1947. The city is home to the oldest shipyard and the only natural harbour on the east coast of India. Visakhapatnam port is the fifth busiest cargo port in India, and the city is home to the headquarters of the Indian Navy's Eastern Command. Visakhapatnam is a major tourist destination and is particularly known for its beaches. It is referred to by many nicknames such as the City of Destiny and the Jewel of the East Coast. It has been selected as one of the Indian cities to be developed as a smart city under the Smart Cities mission. As per the Swachta Sarvekshan rankings of 2017, it is the third cleanest city in India. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The local belief behind the name of the city states, there was a king of 4th century, who on his pilgrimage halted at Lawson's Bay and built a temple dedicated to Vaisakha, which was submerged under the sea, but the name of the temple was got to the settlement. Other such names are, Kulotungapatnam, named by a Chola king, Kulotuna I, Ashakapatnam, based on a Muslim saint, Syed Ali Madani, Ishaq Madani. During the East India Company rule in India, the city was known with the name, Vizagapatam. The suburb Walter is another such name which was derived from the British colonial name, Visagapatam, could also be spelled Visakhapatnam in the West European alphabet. Its shortened form, Visaj was used by the British administrators who were unable to pronounce its long name. It is still referred to as Visaj by locals too, however since independence, people have reverted to calling it by its Indian name of Visakhapatnam. History Visakhapatnam's history stretches back to the 6th century BCE and the city finds mention in ancient texts such as the 4th century BCE writings of Panini and Katyayana. Historically considered part of the Kalinga region, it was ruled by the Vengi Kingdom and the Pallava and Eastern Ganga dynasties during medieval times. Archaeological records suggest that the present city was built around the 11th and 12th centuries CE by the Chola dynasty King Kulathunga The first control over the city fluctuated between the Chola dynasty of Tamil Nadu and the Gajapati kingdom of Odisha until its conquest by the Vijayanagara Empire in the 15th century. In the 16th century it was conquered by the Mughals. European powers eventually set up trading interests in the city and Visakhapatnam came under French rule at the end of the 18th century. The city was ruled by Andhra kings of Vengi and Pallavas. The city is named after Sri Vishaka Varma. Legend has it that Radha and Visakha were born on the same day and were equally beautiful. Sri Vishaka Saki is the second most important gopi of the eight main gopis. She carries messages between Radha and Krishna and is the most expert gopi messenger. Local residents believe that an Andhra king built a temple to pay homage to his family deity Vizaka. This is now inundated under sea water near RK Beach. Another theory is that it is named after a woman disciple of Buddha named Vizaka. 
Later it was ruled by Qutb Shahis, Mughal Empire between 1689 and 1724, Nizam and France before being captured by the British in 1765. European powers eventually set up trading interests in the city and Visakhapatnam came under French rule at the end of the 18th century. The British captured Visakhapatnam after the 1804 Battle of Visagapatam and it remained under British colonial rule until India's independence in 1947, which was a part of the Northern Sarkars. <laughs> Buddhist influence Hindu texts state that during the 5th century BC, the Visakhapatnam region was part of Kalinga territory, which extended to the Godavari River. Relics found in the area also prove the existence of a Buddhist empire in the region. Kalinga later lost the territory to King Ashoka in the bloodiest battle of its time, which prompted Ashoka to embrace Buddhism. Visakhapatnam is surrounded by ancient Buddhist sites, most of which have been excavated recently and illustrate the legacy of Buddhism in the region. Pavoralakanda Pavoralakanda Pigeon Hill is a hillock west of Bimli, about 24 kilometers 15 miles from Visakhapatnam. The Buddhist settlement found here is estimated to date back from the 1st century BC to the 2nd century AD. On the hillock which overlooks the coastline are 16 rock-cut cisterns for collecting rainwater. Gopalapatnam, on the Tandava River, is a village surrounded by brick stupas, viharas, pottery and other Buddhist artifacts. <laughs> Sankaram In 1907 British archaeologist Alexander Ray unearthed Sankaram, a 2,000-year-old Buddhist site. The name, Sankaram, derives from the Sangarama temple or monastery. Located 40 kilometers 25 miles south of Visakhapatnam, it is known locally as Bojanakanda and is a significant Buddhist site in Andhra Pradesh. The three major schools of Buddhism Hinayana, Mahayana and Vajrayana flourished here. The complex is known for its monolithic stupas, rock-cut caves and brick structures. The primary stupa was initially carved out of rock and covered with bricks. Excavations yielded historic pottery and Satavahana coins from the 1st century AD. At Lingalakanda, there are also rock-cut monolithic stupas in rows spread over the hill. The Vihara was active for about 1,000 years. Nearby is another Buddhist site, Bojanakanda, with a number of images of the Buddha carved on the rock face of the caves. At Ligalameda there are hundreds of rock-cut monolithic stupas in rows, spread across the hill. Among other Buddhist attractions are a relic casket, three Chaitya halls, votive platforms, stupas and Vajrayana sculptures. <laughs> Bhavikanda Bhavikanda is an important Buddhist heritage site located on a hill about 15 km, northeast from Visakhapatnam city. Here the Buddhist habitation is noticed on a 16 hectares flat terraced area. The Hinayana school of Buddhism was practiced at the monastery between the 3rd century BC and the 3rd century AD. Bhavikanda has remains of an entire Buddhist complex, comprising 26 structures belonging to three phases. A piece of bone stored in an urn recovered here is believed to belong to the mortal remains of the Buddha. The word Bhavikanda in Telugu means, a hill of wells. Fitting its name, Bhavikanda is a hill with wells for the collection of rainwater. It is located 15 kilometers 9.3 miles from Visakhapatnam and is a significant Buddhist site. Excavation carried out from 1982 to 1987 revealed a Buddhist establishment including a Mahachaitya embedded with relic caskets, a large vihara complex, numerous votive stupas, a stone pillared congregation and rectangular halls and a refectory. Artifacts recovered from the site include Roman and Satavahana coins and pottery dating from the 3rd century BC to the 2nd century AD. A significant finding was a piece of bone with a large quantity of ash in an urn, which is believed to be the remains of the Buddha. The Bhavikanda site is considered one of the oldest Buddhist sites in Asia. It is a reminder of the Buddhist civilization which once existed in southern India, and also reminiscent of Borobudur in Indonesia. 
Topic: Thotlakonda. About 16 kilometers (9.9 miles) from Visakhapatnam is Thotlakonda, a Buddhist complex situated on top of a hill. The Buddhist complex on the Mangamaripada hilltop, locally known as Tatlakonda, lies about 16 km from Visakhapatnam on Visakhapatnam Bhimili Beach Road. After its discovery during an aerial survey, the government of Andhra Pradesh declared the 48 hectares site as a protected monument in 1978. Excavations in 1988 to 1992 exposed structural remains and artifacts, classified as religious, secular and civil. These structures include the stupa, chaitiagrihas, pillared congregation halls, bandagaras, refectory, bhajanasala, drainage, and stone pathways. The site covers an area of 120 acres (49 hectares) and has been declared a protected area by the government of Andhra Pradesh. Excavations have revealed three kinds of structural remains: religious, secular, and civil. Structures include a mahastupa, 16 votive stupas, a stone pillared congregation hall, 11 rock cut cisterns, well paved stone pathways, an apsidal chaitya griha, three round chaitya grihas, two votive platforms, ten viharas, and a kitchen complex with three halls and a refectory. Dining hall. Apart from the structures, Buddhist treasures excavated include nine satavahana and five Roman silver coins, terracotta tiles, stucco decorative pieces, sculptured panels, miniature stupa models in stone, Buddha padas depicted with Ashtamangala symbols i.e. the eight auspicious symbols of swastika, Srivasta, Nandiyavarta, Vardhamanaka, Bhadrasana, Kalasha, Minugala and Darpan and early pottery. Topic. Later history The territory of Visakhapatnam then came under the Andhra rulers of Vengi, and Chalukyas and Pallavas ruled the land. The region was ruled by the eastern Ganga king Suryavamsa Kshatriyas and the Gajapati kings of Odisha from the 10th century to the 16th centuries AD when the region came under the Visakhapatnam rulers. Based on archaeological evidence, the Prabhakar and the eastern Ganga kings of Odisha built temples in the city in the 11th and 12th centuries. The Mughals ruled the area under the Visakhapatnam Nizam during the late 15th and early 16th centuries. European merchants from France, Holland and the East India Company used the natural port to export tobacco, paddy, coal, iron ore, ivory, muslin and other textile products. Local legend tells that an Andhra king, on his way to Benares, rested at Visakhapatnam and was so enchanted by its beauty that he ordered a temple to be built in honour of his family deity, Visakha. Archaeological sources, however, reveal that the temple was probably built between the 11th and 12th centuries by the Cholas. A shipping merchant, Shankarya Chetty, built one of the mandapams pillared halls of the temple. Although it no longer exists, possibly washed away about 100 years ago by a cyclonic storm, elderly residents of Visakhapatnam remember visits to the ancient shrine by their grandparents. Although author Gunapatiraju Achuta Rama Raju denies this, during the 18th century, Visakhapatnam was part of the Northern Sarkars, a region comprising coastal Andhra and southern coastal Odisha, which was first under French control and later British. Visakhapatnam became a district in the Madras Presidency of British India. In September 1804, British and French squadrons fought the naval battle of Visagapatam near the harbour. After India's independence it was the largest district in the country and was subsequently divided into the districts of Srikakulam, Visyanagaram and Visakhapatnam. Part of the city is known by its colonial British name, Waltair. During the colonial era, the city's hub was the Waltair railway station and a part of the city is still called Waltair. Geography The city is situated between the Eastern Ghats and the Bay of Bengal. The city coordinates lies between 17.7041N and 83.2977E. Climate Visakhapatnam has a tropical wet and dry climate The annual mean temperatures ranges between 24.7 to 30.6 degrees Celsius 76 to 87 degrees Fahrenheit, with the maximum in the month of May and the minimum in January. The minimum temperatures ranges between 20 to 27 degrees Celsius 68 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit. 
The highest maximum temperature ever recorded was 42.0 degrees Celsius .6 degrees Fahrenheit in 1978, and the lowest was 20.0 degrees Celsius 68 degrees Fahrenheit in 1904. It receives rainfall from the southwest and northeast monsoons and the average annual rainfall recorded is 1,118.8 mm Demographics As of 2011 Census of India, Visakhapatnam had a population of 1,728,128, of which males were 873,599 and females were 854,529, a sex ratio of 978 females per 1,000 males. The population density was 18,480 per square kilometers, 47,900 per square miles. There were 164,129 children in the age group of 0 to 6 years, with 84,298 boys and 79,831 girls. A sex ratio was 947 girls per 1,000 boys. The average literacy rate stood at 81.79% with a total of 1,279,137 literates, of which 688,678 were males and 590,459 were for males. Visakhapatnam is ranked 122 in the list of fastest growing cities in the world. The total slum population covers 44.61% of the total population which implies 770,971 people reside in slums. The population crossed 2 million mark after expansion of the city limits and stands at 2,035,922. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Language and Religion. Telugu is the most predominantly spoken language by the native speakers. Two dialects of Telugu are spoken by the people, the common dialect and the Uttarandra northeastern Andhra dialect. The latter is mainly spoken by the people who originally belong to the districts of Visyanagaram and Srikakulam. A cosmopolitan population of Visakhapatnam comprise Tamils, Malayalis, Sindhis and Kanadigas, and also Odias, Bengalis and Bihari migrants from other regions of India. There is also an Anglo-Indian community, regarded as the first cosmopolitans of the city. Hinduism is practiced by the majority of its citizens, followed by Islam and Christianity. The area practiced Buddhism for two millennia, as evidenced by the many Buddhist Sangharamas in the outlying areas but the population of Buddhists has waned, with approximately 0.03% population in the entire city based on the recent census. Government and politics Civic administration Greater Visakhapatnam Municipal Corporation is the civic body that oversees the civic needs of the city. It is one of the oldest municipalities in the state, established in 1858 as a voluntary municipal association and upgraded to corporation in 1979, before getting greater tag on 20 November 2005. It has a jurisdictional area of 681.96 square kilometers, 263.31 square miles, which includes the merged municipalities of Gajuaka, Anikapal and Bimunipatnam. The present municipal commissioner of the city is M. Hari Narayanan. Law and order in the city is dealt by Visakhapatnam City Police, equipped with a police commissionerate with commissioner of police as the head and with assisted by three deputy commissioners for different zones. Visakhapatnam Metropolitan Region Development Authority VMRDA is an urban planning agency that covers the GVMC and its suburbs covering, three corporations, two municipalities, two Nagar Panchayats and 13-12 villages from three districts of Srikakulam, Visyanagaram and Viskapatnam. The expanded area of the city, Visakhapatnam Metropolitan Region extends to 6501.65 square kilometers, 2510.30 square miles, with a population of 50, 18000 western, 5018000 and is under the administration of Visakhapatnam Metropolitan Region Development Authority. 
Topic economy Visakhapatnam is one of the 100 fastest growing cities in the world, which has a GDP of $43.5 billion. It is ninth richest city in India for the FY 2015-16. The per capita income estimates of the city stood at 283,816 rupees and it tops among other cities in the state. The fishing harbour is one of the oldest and largest in the city, which was established in 1926, provides livelihood for approximately 50,000 people. The usual seafood exporting capacity of the harbour is 115,000 t 127,000 tonnes and during the FY 2015, it topped seafood exports in terms of value among other ports. Visakhapatnam Port and Gangavaram Port are the two ports of the city and the former one topped charts which handled 60 million t 66 million tons of cargo during the financial year 2016-17. The Hindustan shipyard undertakes building and repairing of naval fleet and has future orders of 2000 crore rupees 280 million dollars the growth in the IT sector in the recent times boosting the local economy in 2016-17, the IT industry in Visaj witnessed an increase in its turnover which recorded as 5,400 crore rupees $750 million with more than 350 firms, in contrast to 2013-14 figures of 1,450 crore rupees $200 million. Sunrise Startup Village, an incubation center, Fintech Valley Visage, to promote technology in financial sector were established. Millennium Tower 1 is set for inauguration and Millennium Tower 2 is in pipeline to promote fintech investments in the city. There are many national and multinational IT, ITEs and fintech firms such as IBM, Wipro, Tech Mahindra, Conexa, Infotech, Conduent, Scient, PAYTM, Concentrix, Sutherland, HSBC, etc. Few more investments are in line like Google X, Lalitha Hooja's Answer Consulting, Franklin Templeton, Innova Solutions, etc. at Fintech Valley in the city. The Brandix India Apparel City is the largest textile park in the country and holds the record for employing more than 15,000 women employers at a single location. The Jawaharlal Nehru Pharma City JNPC developed at Parawada near Visakhapatnam in 2,400 acres has major pharma companies like, Hospira, Mylan, Isai, Reddy's Lab, Aurobindo Pharma, Torrent Pharma, Devis Lab, etc. Andhra Pradesh MedTech Zone Limited is the India's first ultra modern medical equipment manufacturing and testing facility, open to manufacturers and innovators. The prevalence of ferroalloy plants is due to the availability of manganese ore near Visakhapatnam. Aluminium refineries such as Anrak Aluminium and Jindal Aluminium are developing because of the bauxite reserves around the city. Visakhapatnam is a part of the Petroleum, Chemical and Petrochemical Investment Region PCPIR, proposed between Visakhapatnam and Kakinada. The PCPIR is expected to generate 1.2 million jobs and a projected investment of 34 rupees, 30,000 million. Simhadri Super Thermal Power Plant of NTPC Limited is expanding from 1,000 to 2,000 megawatts at a cost of 50 billion rupees, $696 million. Hindujas has begun construction of a 1,070 MW thermal power plant in Visakhapatnam district at a cost of 70 billion rupees $974 million. NTPC is establishing 4 by 1,000 MW imported coal-based thermal power plant in Visakhapatnam district in Andhra Pradesh, which will come up at an investment of 20,000 crore rupees. Approximately 5 crore rupees outlay is needed for generation of 1 MW thermal power. Cityscape Neighborhoods Over the years, Visakhapatnam has turned from a fishing village into a commercial city with busy streets. Most notable areas of the city include urban areas like Dwaraka Nagar, Gajuaka, Gopalapatnam, Jagadamba Center, Matalapalam, Madurawada, Sithamidhara and semi-rural suburbs such as Simachalam, Penderthi, and Parwada. <laughs> <laughs> Landmarks Visakhapatnam is one of the main tourism destinations in the state of Andhra Pradesh. The city is famous for beaches, caves and the eastern ghats as well as wildlife sanctuaries. 
About 30% of the city is covered with greenery. Major landmarks in the city include Dolphin's Nose, Lighthouse, Kailasagiri, Beach Road, Vuda Park, Vizaka Museum, and Matsyadarsini. An aquarium. The INS Cursura Submarine Museum and Antisubmarine Warfare ASW aircraft to 142 aircraft museum opusite to each other is the only of its kind in the world, conceptualizing the hunted and hunter of the wars. Indira Gandhi Zoological Park in the city has variety of wildlife species. Era Mati Dibalu red sand dunes are situated between Visakhapatnam and Bhimunipatnam are one of the geo-heritage sites in the country. This tourist spot is now protected and preserved as a heritage site. Dr. Ramanaidu Film Studio in 33 acres space off the Vizaka Bimili Beach Road is one of the film shootings destination. Telugu Heritage Museum on atop Kailasagiri was developed by World Telugu Federation and Visakhapatnam Urban Development Authority, Vuda City Central Park. Adding one more feather to its cap, Visakhapatnam is home to India's tallest musical fountain opened in the Central Park. Oscillating vertically at 360 degrees, the fountain dances to the tune of digital music in different colors. Beaches along the coastline of the Bay of Bengal include RK Beach, Rushikonda Beach and Mangamaripata Beach. Others are Yarada, Bimili, Lawson's Bay, Tenati, Sagar Nagar, Thotlakonda and Gongavaram beaches. Bora Caves are caves discovered by British geologist William King in 1807. Taida an eco-tourism project, Kambalakonda Wildlife Sanctuary under Andhra Pradesh Forest Department are wildlife conservation sites near the city. Culture Poets, artists Some of the notable poets from the city include Sri Sri, Galaputi Maruti Rao, Sirivanela Sitharama Sastri Religious worships Some of the religious sites are also of great importance like Iskan Temple, Simachalam Temple of Lord Narasimha 16 km 9 .9 miles north of the city, Sri Kanaka Maha Lakshmi Temple. Recent archaeological excavations of Buddhist shrines revealed Buddhist dominance in this area and these are recognized as heritage sites that include Buddharamam, Salagudam, Sankaram and Devapuram etc. Topic. Transport The city commuters prefer city buses and auto rickshaws as the primary mode of transport, followed by the two-wheelers and cars. Road and rail are preferred for long-distance commuting and are supported by Dwaraka Bus Station and Visakhapatnam Railway Station respectively. It also has sea and air travel infrastructure such as, Visakhapatnam Port and Visakhapatnam Airport. The APSRTC Visakhapatnam region operates city, district and interstate bus services from Dwaraka Bus Station. There are more than 600 city buses being run in over 150 routes, in addition to bus rapid transit system in two corridors of Penderthi and Simachalam. A planned integrated bus terminal complex would be built at Matalapalam. Apart from buses, there are about 25,000 auto rickshaws plying on the city roads which provide intermediate public transport. Visakhapatnam Railway Station is as an A1 station with the highest gross revenue in the Walter Railway Division. It serves an average of 20,000 to 25,000 passengers daily and may rise up to 40,000 during festivals. The country's largest diesel loco shed with a capacity of 206. Visakhapatnam Metro is a planned metro rail project whose first phase is expected to be completed by December 2018 with financial support from the Japan International Cooperation Agency. As of 2013, the percentage of transport mode shares in the city are, 18% buses, 9% autos, 15% two-wheelers, 2% cars and 55% non-motorized transport bicycles and pedestrians. The total road network accounts for a total length of 2,007.10 km 1,247.15 miles. NH16, a major highway and a part of the Golden Quadrilateral System bypasses the city. During the 2016-17 fiscal year. Visakhapatnam Airport IATA, VTZ, ICAO, VOTZ had served a total of 2,358,029 passengers, an increase of 30.7% from previous year. 
It handled 19,550 aircraft including 1,421 international and 18,129 domestic. Visakhapatnam port is one of 13 major ports in India and the only major port of Andhra Pradesh. It is India's second largest port by volume of cargo handled. It is located on the east coast of India and is located midway between the Chennai and Kolkata ports. Cruise shipping is operational between Visakhapatnam and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Topic education The primary and secondary school education is imparted by government, aided and private schools, under the school education department of the state. As per the School Information Report for the academic year 2016-17, Urban Visakhapatnam had 1, 44,268 Western, 144,268 students enrolled in 434 schools. The Central Board of Secondary Education, Secondary School Certificate or the Indian Certificate of Secondary Education are the different types of syllabus followed by different schools. The medium of instruction followed by schools are English and Telugu. The St. Aloysius Anglo-Indian Boys High School is the oldest school in the city to have established in the year 1847. The Visakhapatnam District Central Library is supported by the government and is located at Dwaraka Nagar. There are tens of junior colleges under government, Andhra Pradesh Social Welfare Residential and Private Undertakings. Andhra University is the only autonomous college approved under University's Grant Commission Scheme. Mrs. A. V. N. College is one of the oldest educational institution in the city, the GITAM University the first private university in Andhra Pradesh and the Gayatri Vidya Parishad College of Engineering are other technical education institutions in the city. Visakhapatnam is also home to Damodaram Sanjivaya National Law University, which is the national law university for the state of Andhra Pradesh. DSNLU takes entrance through Common Law Admission Test and ranks 15th by order of establishment among the 17 national law universities. Visage is due to get India's first packaging park with an Indian Institute of Packaging, IIP and Bits Palani and Birla International School under the aegis of Sarala Birla Academy. The Indian Maritime University was established as a central university by the Government of India by an Act of Parliament the Indian Maritime University Act 2008. IMU is poised to play a role in the development of human resources for the maritime sector. Visakhapatnam also has the National Institute of Oceanography. The Indian Institute of Management, Indian Institute of Petroleum and Energy are the other institutions of national importance. <laughs> <laughs> Defence and research Naval base Visakhapatnam is the headquarters of the Eastern Naval Command, the Naval Science and Technological Laboratory a, DRDO lab, a Chief Quality Assurance Establishment CQAE, an EFS office, a naval dockyard established in 1949 and naval bases including INS Verbahu, INS Karna, INS Kalinga, INS Samudrika, INS Satavahana, and INS Dega. A new base at INS Rambili is being built on 5,000 acres 20 square kilometers with an investment of 15 billion rupees $209 million, as the first dedicated submarine base in India. India's first nuclear submarine INS Arahant was launched in the naval dockyard, and Bharat Dynamics has begun manufacturing torpedoes. Visakhapatnam also has presence of the Indian Coast Guard including ships and offices. Multiple naval training establishments, such as the Navy Shipwright School, are also situated here. <laughs> Research organizations The Baba Atomic Research Center plans its second research facility in the country after Trombay in the area. There are also offices of the National Institute of Oceanography and the India Meteorological Department. Sports Cricket is the most popular sport, followed by tennis and football. Visakhapatnam is home to a number of local cricket teams participating in district and zonal matches. Gully cricket, a form of cricket played in streets or parks, is a popular sport among local youth. 
Visakhapatnam co hosted the 32nd National Games alongside Hyderabad in 2002. The city has seven cricket stadiums, which are used for Ranji Trophy matches. Two of these stadiums have been used for one day international matches. Indira Priyadarshini Stadium, also known as the Municipal Corporation Stadium, hosted the first ODI match on 9 December 1988 and the last ODI on 3 April 2001. The stadium has been discontinued in favor of the new Akka VDCA Stadium in Madurawada. Akka VDCA Stadium is the home of Andhra Cricket Association. It regularly hosts Ranji Trophy, One Day Internationals and Test Internationals. The stadium is the home ground of Andhra Pradesh cricket team. The stadium also hosted IPL matches as a neutral venue. It hosted its first test match against England beginning on 17 November 2016. Port Trust Golden Jubilee Stadium is the second largest stadium in Visakhapatnam, which has hosted under-19 youth internationals. It also hosted the 2014 Pro Kabaddi League season as the home ground for the Telugu Titans. Swarna Bharati Indoor Stadium, built by the Greater Visakhapatnam Municipal Corporation, is used for various indoor sports, and the GVMC Aqua Sports Complex, an aquatic centre for swimming and diving, is near the beach road. Surfing activities are common at the Rushikonda Beach. Scuba diving at Chintapali in the scenic city has been attracting tourists from all over. Media The Telugu dailies publishers in the city are Inadu, Andhra Jyoti, Sakshi, Andhra Bhumi, Andhra Prabha, Vartha, Surya, Prajasakti and Visalandra. Apart from the local language, there are also English papers such as, The Hindu, The Times of India, Deccan Chronicle, The Hindu Business Line, The New Indian Express and The Hans India. Topic. FM stations in Visage Radio City 91.1 Telugu, Hindi Big 92.7 FM 92.7 Telugu, Hindi Red FM 93.5 Telugu Radio Mirchi 98.3 Telugu Air Primary 101.6 Telugu Air FM Rainbow 102.0 Telugu Vizaka FM 105.6 Telugu Gyan Vani 106. 4 Telugu, English, Hindi Notable people born or associated with the city Alori Sitarama Raju Gurizada Aparau Sir C. V. Raman Gam Maludora Katamanchi Ramalinga Reddy Sarfpali Radhakrishnan Teniti Viswanatham Srirangam Srinivasa Rao Arudra Galaputi Maruti Rao Sirivanella Sitharama Sastri Venkaya Naidu Ramana Gogala Sakath Maineni P.T. Srinivasa Iyengar Kachralakota Rangadama Rao Kambampati Hari Babu Noakala Chinna Satyanarayana Shri Kantha Krishnamacharyulu Devika Rani L. V. Revanth Yalaka Venugopal Rao See also Visakhapatnam portal List of most populous cities in India List of municipal corporations in India